It's Wednesday, 22nd, June 2050. Welcome to this weather bulletin at 9 p.m. My name is Patricia. Well, over the last few years, we've been having quite a problem with our electricity distribution throughout the entire country. And as such, the question that has been on everyone's mind is, is Masinga Dam actually drying up? Well, it might come as a surprise to most of you that over 50 years ago, around the year 2000, water levels in Masinga Dam at the end of a dry season were quite high and this was sufficient for our electricity needs. However, today the situation has changed quite drastically and for the worse. At the end of a rainy season, we see that we have very low water levels and this is not able to support our electricity needs. Well, another question that has been on many people's minds, especially those on the slopes of Mount Kenya, is, is the snow a common occurrence now in the tropics? And why we ask this is because there have been quite many hailstorms whose intensity and frequency has increased throughout the years. But actually, they are hailstorms and not snow. Let's look at what our weather is expected to be like tomorrow morning. Over most parts of the country, we see that we'll have quite a calm, dry morning and sunny intervals. However, over the coastal regions, we see that Mombasa and Lamu are expected to have showers in the morning and temperatures of 22 and 24 degrees Celsius, respectively. As we head on into the afternoon, we see quite a small change. Kisumu and Kitale, as well as other parts in the western parts of the country, are expected to have showers accompanied by thunderstorms. The rest of the country is expected to remain dry and Nairobi will have showers and high temperature of 36 degrees Celsius. Garissa and Wajia are expected to have the highest temperatures tomorrow afternoon of 45 degrees Celsius. Well, these high temperatures today are a common occurrence. However, up to 50 years ago, in the year 2000, in the city of Nairobi, we see that we had an average of around 25 degrees Celsius being the maximum temperature in the month of June. However, this value went down slightly up to 2015 and after 2020, we had quite a steady increase. And by today, in the year 2050, we have an average of around 30, uh, 36 to 30, 35 to 36 degrees Celsius. Likewise, minimum temperatures seem to have taken the same trend. In the year 2000, we had 18 degrees Celsius being the minimum temperature for Nairobi over the month of June. But this increased steadily up to currently where we have an average of between 22 and 26 degrees Celsius being the minimum temperature. Well, we also know that our country's economy depends largely on rain-fed agriculture. And as such, rainfall is very important, especially for towns in the breadbasket regions. Kitale, especially in the year 2000, had uh, around 650 millimeters of rainfall annually, and we had uh, quite fluct some fluctuations throughout the entire season up to the year 2020. However, after that, we've been having quite a lot of variety across years. We have years with very high uh, rainfall amounts of up to 750 millimeters, and then we have the next year having very low rainfall amounts of up to 400 millimeters. Well, all this can be attributed to climate change, which is increasing by the day. There are a number of things that we can be able to do. The situation is not lost. Throughout our entire country, we have so many industries that regularly emit carbon into the atmosphere. If we are able to stop these carbon emissions, then we can be able to stop climate change. Something else that we can be able to do is to start afforestation, especially in Mao Forest, which is one of the largest water towers for our country. And today, its situation is very pitiable. We have trees cut throughout the entire forest. And finally, it is commendable that the government has tried to encourage citizens to use renewable energy. We have windmills dotting the entire country. And even us, at a domestic level, we can be able to do even more to stop climate change. We can stop using carbon fuels and use more renewable energy. Well, I have been your presenter for today. I hope you do have yourselves a very lovely carbon-free evening. As you have just seen, climate change will increasingly affect our day-to-day -day weather. But we don't have to wait until 2050 to witness its impact. Already today, many parts of the world are experiencing more intense rainfall, floods, storms, heat waves, droughts. We need to minimize these negative impacts, and the best way to do that is to rapidly and significantly reduce our emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. We have the power and the responsibility 
to create a better future for ourselves and for those to come. But we need action at least at two levels. We need a new robust global climate change agreement and we need local policy that points us toward green growth and action by investors, industry, cities and regions. Then we can arrive at a stable climate neutral future. Let's work together to make our societies safer and more resilient. Please join me in taking action on climate change. Thank you.